This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this video isn't going to be about um, developing in Unity directly, but it is an important part of your game dev process, which is about sharing the work that you're doing. Um, I think in what's frankly a very flooded games market these days, it's really important to be able to stand out and to get your game and your work in front of as many eyes as possible as soon as you can. So one way to do that is to create an animated GIF of a part of your game either that you're working on or a cool feature that you want to share, things like that. I think the animation really helps you stand out if you're in like a social media feed or even just on your blog or uh, wherever you're sharing this. So um, the question though is how do you really get from creating a scene in Unity to actually having a GIF file to work with. There are free kind of one-step options out there where you can just kind of go from a screen capture to a GIF. However, I find that none of those really um, offer the level of control that I'm looking for and sometimes honestly don't really have the quality that I'd be looking for um, in creating one of these um, one of these animations. So I'm going to just take you through what my workflow is. Quick caveat, not, I am working with Photoshop, but it is not a free um, piece of software. If I do ever find a full workflow that is free, that gives quality results, um, I will certainly share it here. But right now, I just kind of want to show you how I do this and how you can use um, a couple of programs to create um, some quality GIFs that you can save and share your work online. So I'm working right now in my scene, my orbit scene from the last series that I did. Um, I've added some color and a couple things here and let's say that now we're here and we're like, hey, I want to, you know, make a quick demo of what I've done. So we can see here, I'll hit play. We see that we've got this scene with the sun and the planets orbiting around it. Looks pretty cool. Got some nice lighting effects. Um, how do we take this and make it into a GIF? Well, the first piece of software we need is a program called Open Broadcaster Software. And this is an open source program. It is free. I'll include a link down in the um, show notes below. And I'm going to open up the window here now. You'll see it's actually recording because this is the program I use to record these tutorials. And basically it is a um, pretty fully featured screen capture software that lets you set, you know, what you want to be capturing from. You can set, you know, specific windows or specific parts of your screen. You can add in things like I have a logo slug that I've added in in this particular scene. Basically, it works in the setup where you create a scene, which is a collection of video sources, and then it puts those together. So if you are just opening this up, this will, I think it may have a kind of like a starting one. This, in fact, may be it. It just could be called scene. Um, and if hopefully it's just got your desktop, but how you would create this is you would right click down here into scenes and say add scene. I'm not going to do this right now because I don't want to um, mess up the recording that I'm doing. And then from there, once you've added that scene, you can have the option to rename it if you want to. Then you're going to go over to sources, right click, and you're going to add a monitor capture. You're going to just take your whole monitor. We can crop that later. Um, but I find it's useful just to get the whole monitor in case there is something that you might not have thought of. You want to include a tab or a specific button you're hitting or something. Just get everything in at once and then you can um, pare down from there. The other thing you need to do is go into this settings button and go into broadcast settings. And this file path here is where your, um, where your video is going to end up. And this is obviously important because you're going to then want to access that file once we're over in Photoshop. But um, the other thing to note about this is that Open Broadcaster software likes to default to a uh, flash video format, which Photoshop can't actually read. So it's not really much help to us. So you want to be sure that when you go into there and you're saving, you switch the uh, file format from the FLV format to the MP4 format and that will be something that you can work with and get frames from to make your GIF file. So once you've got that set and set where you want your file to go, click OK, and then this button here will actually say start recording for you when you're obviously not recording. You'll click that, minimize your OBS window, and you'll just hit play on your scene. And it will start to orbit around, you'll see this happening. Uh, get the uh, footage that you're looking for. You can actually play your game at this point if you need, you know, a character moving around to show something off. Anything like that you can do. You can even use this if you're like doing a Unity tip or something. You could go over here and, um, 
you know, show what settings you're adjusting in the inspector, anything like that. This is actually great for any of those sorts of solutions. Once you've gotten what you want, you're gonna hit, you know, you're gonna stop your scene, go back over to open broadcaster software and simply stop recording. And what's gonna end up happening is you can then go to file and you can open your recordings folder and you will see that you have a created file. This is actually literally our um, video that you're watching right now being created as we speak, but you'll have that video file there. And just you know, kind of make a note of where you've saved it. And that really um, is all you need to do in Unity and Open Broadcaster software. From here, we're gonna jump over to um, Photoshop. So I'm going to um, kind of do a cut here so that I can get stuff set up. And I will see you over in the program. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, and as I said, this is a paid program. However, they do have a free demo if you'd like to try this out, see if it's something that works for you. Um, and they do have some um, more limited options in terms of subscriptions that are a little bit more affordable, If I say, like I say, if this is something that you're really interested in. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to File, we're going to go to Import Video Frames to Layers, I'm going to navigate to where my video was captured, which I had in videos, board to bits, tutorials, Unity to GIF, and it's this GIF footage one that I took here. I'm going to open that up, and you'll see that it gives you this thing you can choose to import from beginning to end, or you can only um, take a selected range. And that's actually what I'm going to do. And you'll see here now, um, you can kind of scrub through, see where your footage is, where it actually starts. And so I can see where I kind of clicked and that was where the uh, planets start animating. So I'll probably want to drag my um, range over to there. Once you start dragging these range sliders, it automatically goes to the um, selected range. And then I can kind of scroll through, see how long I recorded for. And you certainly don't have to um, take the entire thing, but you can. Um, if there's only a certain segment that you really wanted to capture, you can do that. Bear in mind that there are some size limitations, especially if you're sharing on social media. So you may, um, and obviously if you're doing this on the internet, um, you're going to have to deal with load times and stuff as well. So you may want to make sure that you're being a little bit more um, conservative with your length of your video. But I am going to quickly show you here. So I'll just scrub this. We'll say right now that I'm thinking I'm just going to do the whole recording that I did. Um, when I go to hit OK, it's, I think it's going to give this is going to give me a warning right now. Let's see here. Yes, this will produce a large document and possibly take a long time. I kind of use that as a rule of thumb to say if that's the case, then I this is probably too big for what I'm trying to um, show off right now. And there's a couple things you can do here. The first one is that you can just kind of narrow down what section of your video you're going to um, capture here. The other thing you can do is you can limit the number of frames that you actually capture. You can do every other frame, or you can you know, certainly do every third frame or fourth frame, etc. Bear in mind that doing this is going to make your um, video look like it's been sped up because you're seeing only half the amount of frames, and they're, but they're going just as fast. I'll show a quick way that you can solve that though. So let's capture like this now. So we've got a little bit less here every two frames. Let's see, it may still give us the warning. Nope, that actually worked. So, okay, now we've created our video. Let's see how many, this is about 145 frames. It's not too, too long. Um, and what we'll do is we'll go up to Window and go down to Timeline. And here we see that our, these frame, or these layers that are all here have also been put into their own individual frames so that when we advance through frame by frame, we see the animation up here. Now, you can obviously do some more cutting and trimming here. If you look and see that, oh, I don't really need these first three frames, you can delete them um, just using this uh, trash can button right here. Like if I wanna get rid of this very first frame, I can just click that. Confirm you wanna delete the frame, gets rid of that. Um, but right now, what we're also gonna do, what we wanna do is get rid of all of this kind of access. We don't need to show the Unity editor right now. Um, what we really just want is this game view. So we're gonna go to the crop tool here, and we're just gonna kind of drag in our borders. And I typically like to do a more, you can certainly crop however you'd like, I typically do a more um, horizontally um, 
biased shape. Um, you can certainly do a square or a vertical, but um, I just feel like it kind of it feels a little bit more um, a little bit more normal, I guess, um, to look at. Sometimes seeing like a really vertical shape can kind of be a little bit throwing, especially if you're not unless you're doing like a mobile game, then it would make a little bit more sense. Um, I also typically limit my width of my um, just to about 60 pixels, but we can fix that by um, adjusting the size. First off, get the footage that you actually want to capture. This looks pretty good for what I want, so I'm going to hit enter and that will actually crop all of our layers to that size. And then if you want to make this, like this is right now I think about 700 wide, um, I can go to image size, shrink this down to about 600, that would be 378 high, that's not bad. Um, and I'll say OK, and that will reduce down the size. Now I am getting a little bit of, um, looks like some kind of cutoff there in terms of um, some opacity, but that's OK. This will work all right. So now that we have our video cropped and we've got you know the footage cut the way we want it, we can go over and we're going to go to export to export this as a GIF. Now you can do export as, the problem is that I find that this version does not give you as many controls in terms of like to maintain the size and stuff of the GIF that you're creating. So I'm actually going to go to this save for web legacy. I like this, I, I tend to like this better. Uh, it gives you a lot of options here in terms of how you can um, how you can kind of adjust um, your GIF settings, and it also shows you right down here how big your file is going to be. Um, I know that the kind of hard limit for things like um, Tumblr in particular has a limit of one megabyte, so if you have anything larger than that, you cannot post it there. Um, other sites like Instagram have a much higher, I think it's like 10 megabytes, but I always find it good to go with the lowest common denominator, also because depending on someone's download speed, it might take them a while to get a file that's too big. And so they're just kind of staring at either a thumbnail or you know just like a placeholder that isn't giving them the full story. So the quicker you can get to the animation and really capture your audience's imagination, the better. So you can do things here. Um, Weirdly, checking, keeping transparency on seems to actually keep the size lower. I don't know why that is. I would think that um, transparency would add more information, but apparently it doesn't. So I always keep that checked. Um, I find that adaptive is actually a really good um, setting for this. They have like perceptual, selective, adaptive, restrictive. Adaptive tends to give me the best file sizes I find without losing too much um, quality. And then the other thing you can do for um, maintaining file size is choose your amount of colors. Max is out at uh, 256, but I find that you can often, especially if it's um, a little bit more limited of a color palette, you can go down to as much as 64 and not lose too much quality. With all that, now we can hit play and this will show us how this would play. Now we see here, like I said, because I cut it down to every two, every other frame, this is going really, really quickly around here now, which may be fine, maybe what you're looking for, you know, you're cool with that. It's, you know, kind of eye-catching that it's going so quickly. But if you want this to be back slowed down a little bit, what you're gonna do, we're gonna actually hit cancel right now, is you're gonna go to your timeline, you're gonna select all of your frames, just kind of shift click, select the first one and then shift click on the last one gets all your frames and now down here you're going to see how long the duration is of each frame and right now it's 0.03 which is about it's a, I think it's for about um, 30 frames per second and all we have to do is click on this and now when we change this because all of the frames are selected it will change all of them so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to other and I'm going to change this from 0.03 I'm going to double that to 0.06 because remember we're doing um, half the frames, so double the duration of them. And now if we go to export, save for web legacy, hit play, we see that that is, it's a little bit jump, more jumpy now because we're not doing, a, we're doing like 15 frames a second, but we're getting that proper speed of our um, animation. And I think frankly, because this is such a just smooth orbit animation, it actually makes that stand out a little bit more but that gives us the, um, the effect here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hit save. 
I'm going to save this into, I've got a separate um, folder here just for GIFs. I'm going to call this, uh, we'll just call this Orbit Demo. Save that. And now we can go into that GIFs folder. We see it here. We see we've got the file. I think if I open this, oh, if we open this in photos, it will play for us right here. And now we've got this working, uh, animating um, image file that we can upload to pretty much any social media that we want, put on our blog and say, hey, here's where I'm making progress right now. Check out what I'm working on and hopefully garner some interest and start building yourself an audience for your game. So um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. As always, um, feel free to support on Patreon. You can talk to me directly. And um, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.